In our meditation on the larger catechism, we're looking at questions numbers 115 and 116, which read as follows. Which is the fourth commandment? The answer is, the fourth commandment is, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Question 116. What is required in the fourth commandment? The fourth commandment requireth of all men the sanctifying or keeping holy to God such set times as he hath appointed in his word, expressly one whole day in seven, which was the seventh from the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ and the first day of the week ever since. And so to continue to the end of the world, which is the Christian Sabbath, and in the New Testament called the Lord's Day. As we've made our way through the Ten Commandments, we've focused on who the Lord our God is, how we are to approach Him in worship, how we are to reverence His name in our worship. Now we come to focus on the one day that God sets aside for His worship. In his goodness, he's provided us one day in seven whereby we might put aside the things of this life, all of its cares and concerns, all of its activities, so that, so that we might devote our hearts and our minds to God and his ways. This is for our spiritual good. You recall that Jesus said that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The purpose of the Sabbath is to minister to our spiritual needs and our physical needs. Principally, it's a day of rest, a day when we set aside earthly activities and focus our hearts and souls upon the Lord and on His Word. The requirement of the commandment is that we set aside one day in seven uh, and have that whole day set apart for God. It is holy, that is distinguished from the rest of the week set apart for God and His service. It's not just the one hour in which we gather together at 9.30 on a Sunday morning that's holy before the Lord. It's the whole day that uh, God has appointed for Himself. There may be a debate as to when that day starts or when it ends. Some would say our modern practice is from midnight to midnight. Others would say, following more of the Hebrew, that uh, the Sabbath begins with sunset Saturday evening and then to uh, evening, the evening of Sunday. Uh, that particular aspect of it is not quite so important as the fact that we are to observe one day in the seven. Uh, to my mind, uh, the Sabbath would begin with the evening of Saturday and go through Sunday evening as well. The <clears throat> Sabbath is set apart as a whole day before the Lord. In the, in the commandment, it focuses on the seventh day of the week, Reflecting on God's work of creation, God created the heavens and the earth in six days, blessed His work, and rested on the seventh day. And He set that apart for us as an example. And so in the first uh, history of the church, her experience was that on the seventh day, the last day of the week, she was to rest and put aside her labors and rest in the Lord. With the coming of Christ, and particularly His resurrection from the dead, having Risen on the first day of the week, the Christian church has recognized the first day of the week as the Christian Sabbath. Uh, Jesus, if you will, rested on the Sabbath day in death and rose again on the first day of the week, inaugurating a new creation, new heavens, and a new earth. And with the change of the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day of the week, which you can see in the example of the apostles as they meet together on the Sabbath day, on the first day of the week, throughout the New Testament, this change symbolizes that our redemption is accomplished, and it lays the foundation for our work in the coming week. We work 
on the basis of the rest that we receive in Christ. We are renewed by God's grace. We are made new in His image. And by the power of His Spirit, we go out into the world, empowered by this special <coughs> Sabbath, that we might bring all the world under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so there's been this transition from the seventh day to the first day of the week. Some object to that. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists suggest that we should remain with a seventh-day observance. But that is to miss uh, the significance of the resurrection of Christ and the change that occurred with the uh, doing away with the old covenant uh, ceremonies. Uh, this new Sabbath is established in God's Word. The Apostle John in his revelation says that it was on the Lord's Day that he was in the Spirit, and thereby in Revelation chapter 1, uh, noting the, the Christian Sabbath uh, as being the Lord's Day. Uh, this has been given to us to keep us in, in our faith through the end of the world. It's called a Christian Sabbath, or also the Lord's Day. Uh, it's a day of rest. We'll explain a little bit more of what that means. But we are grateful that the Lord is mindful to us our spiritual interests in calling us to set aside this one day when we can approach God and devote ourselves to Him and to His service.